Just another day that the Lord, he has kept me. Come on, saints, clap your hands. Just another day. All right, y'all, come on in the room. Come on in the room. That's okay. I'm going to play my little video. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, look at that. Yes, audio crowns now. My God Almighty. Come on in the room. Come, greetings. <laughs> Come on in the room. Listen, as y'all are coming on, I'm just going to take this time because we're really not supposed to be starting until uh, 8 o'clock. So I'm going to play these videos. Y'all just enjoy. We'll be on at 8, but just enjoy the ministry of Bishop Mason, Elsie Shaw, Mother Estella Boy. Y'all y'all going to get exactly where we're coming from tonight. And make sure y'all share the video, okay? All right. Make sure y'all get your offering, too. Don't forget your offerings. We we babe, we dropping good. We dropping good word, good knowledge on tonight. Should nobody be offended? We're just trying to enlighten you, help you out, and all that good stuff. Okay, you when you leave here, you won't leave here like you came. Amen. Somebody, amen. Somebody just say amen, amen in the comment section. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God in the comment section. Hey Tiffany, knees. How you doing? Let's see, we're going to play Estella Boyd. Let's mm -hmm. go play Mother Boyd. Hey, Antonio. Boy, tonight is, tonight is the night that you going to get you a good word. Let's go and play. Um, Which one should I do first, y'all? Hey, I ain't going to do my greetings and all this other stuff until I get through these videos. Uh, I think I want to do either Estella. Uh, which one should I do first, y'all? Well, that's okay. We'll do Mother Boyd. Let's do Mother Boyd. I cried, oh, Lord, save my I cried, oh, Lord, yeah, Lord, I cried, Lord, save my soul. I cried, Lord, I said, oh, Lord, save me. Save my soul. I give up all. I give up all. I give up all. Now save my soul. I cry, Lord. Say, I cry, Lord. I cry, Lord. Save my soul. I cried, Lord. I said, Oh, Lord. I said, Oh, Lord. Not save my soul. I cried, Oh, Lord. I cried, 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 Lord. Yes, God. Now, that's why I hard out to the Lord, each one of us, for our sins. Hey! I'm asking him to help each one that we get something from the Lord. Amen. I'm asking him this night. Hey! To give us something to go back with. Feel me. Hey! I want to feel it. Come now. Now do it, God. Yeah! Hope! Oh! Yes, see. Oh, God. Oh, God. Do it tonight. Yeah, yes! Hey! Yes, God. We are on the altar, Lord. Yes, God. Stand to your feet. Go to prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, Lord. Give us, give us, give us, give us what we need tonight. 
Yeah, Lord. Hold your mouth. You ain't said nothing. Yes. Oh, Lord. Send on the limits tonight. Send it on. Send it on tonight. My soul is waiting on you, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Hold my son to your home. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Send on victory, Lord. Send on your deliverance, Lord. Open your mouth. Yes. Yeah, God. Oh. Oh Lord, oh Lord, yeah Lord, yeah Lord, yes, hey, let's go, yeah God, yeah God, give it to him tonight, yes, my soul long for you God, in a dry and a thirsty land, hey, hey, Yes! Break every yoke. Read up in the ocean. Root up that evil, Lord. Hey, hey. Yeah, yes! Fill our soul, Lord. Fill us with love tonight. Yes, God. Yeah, God! Oh, my son, now. Do it now, God. Yes! Woo! Yes, God. Yeah, God! Yeah, God! Yes, God. My soul long for you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yeah, God! I'm on the altar tonight. Yes, God. Supply my need tonight, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Baptize me tonight. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, I now. Come now, I said now. Yes, God. Come now, come now. Yes. Woo! Yes, Jesus. Come now, God. Put it within us. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, God. Oh, ba 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 see now. The time has come. Come now. How? Now. He did it your hope. How now? Yes, now. Come now. Come now. Yes, God. Yes. Oh, my, now, now, now he come. Come now. Come now. Come now. Yes, God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. Give it to him now. Hey. Yeah. Glory to God. Pour it out into the ocean. Give it to him now. Open up the understanding, God. Not the eyes. Not the ears that they might hear. Yes! Woohoo! Yes, God. He coming into the ocean. He coming into the ready heart. Ho! Oh! Yes, God. Yes, God. He's coming in. Hey! Yeah! God. Yes, God. Woo! -hoo. Coming in. He's the purified. Yes, God. He sets you free. Oh, bo -bo 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 -bo. He did it in the ocean. Ooh, ooh, sir, it's about to take me out. Oh, Father, Father God. All right, let's see if we can make it through. 
Ooh. Um, Carla, we're not even going to do that today. But you can go on about your business, okay? God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Uh, next, we're going to do Mother Elsie Shaw. We're going to go from there. Thank you, Lord. Help. Hold on. Let, let me let me address this. This is this is the reason why. Let me just because the show ain't even started yet, right? The show hasn't even started yet. If you come on here to be ignorant, I'm not even gonna bother because this morning's show was not even about disrespect or anything. It's about knowledge and power. If you don't understand the knowledge of power and what the origins of prayer is and where that power comes from, your ignorance will not be tolerated. God bless you. An old sister in Memphis used to say, not just help, but quick help. Quick help. Quick help. Quick help. Quick help. For the help of the Lord is my help. The help of the Lord is my help. And I thank you for being my help. Hey! Thank you. We hear you tonight, Lord. Incline my ears to hear thee tonight. If he gives you, put your hands on your ears. Let my ears hear you tonight. For thou art God of spirit, thou art God of truth. Mm. And the reality of you is really real. You're not a fake. Hey, Kashaba. Mm. Mm. Let me hear you tonight. Open my ears. Take the scabs from off of my spiritual eyes. And let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. Mm. Let my ears hear you. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. For the coming of the Lord is so nigh. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Mm. 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 The coming of the Lord, E-N-D time, is here. Mm. The bigness of our feet, women and men. The tallness of the boys that come from your husband's lawns and out of your bellies tell you there is end time for there were giants in the days of Noah and it was in the days of Noah shall it be in the timing of the coming of the son of man so you're coming so soon your coming is so now mm, and you say get me ready let me be ready get me ready let me be ready mm. Seeing the days are so evil, get me ready, prepare me. Mm. These clinics, these pray, pray clinics, these word of God clinics, they're getting us ready, and I thank you. Hey! Oh, Jesus, in the commencement of the service, you were in a great praise. Mm. Mm. You said, let everything that hath breath praise you. Mm. And women, we are the last thing that he made. It took us from just a rib of a man. And my brother and one of us, all you need is one rib at a time. He didn't take but one from Adam. Mm. Mm. Oh, mother. Be ready. Hey. hey. Oh, hey. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. He's coming 
soon. Hey! He's coming soon. So soon, so soon. He's coming soon. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming soon. He's at the door. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Be ready. Say yes, Lord. <laughs> mm. You told us to be ready, and our answer to thee is yes. <laughs> mm. Yes, Lord. That's at the old G. E. Patterson building. That's the yes, old white building. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. yes, Lord. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mmm. 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 The spirit maketh intercessions and groanings, which cannot be uttered. Mm -hmm. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Be ready. Be ready. Yay! <laughs> Be hey. ready. that instructs us in righteousness, that word that rebukes, hallelujah, and reproves us in righteousness. Send thy word. Mm. The word of God, which is like a hammer, breaks the stone in this and the rocks of our hearts. Send your word tonight. Mm. Mm. Your word that clean, better than full of soap. Mm. The great colognes of the earth can get you right on the outside, but they can't do nothing on the inside. So send your word. Send your word. And we'll know some more about you, for you are the word of God. You are the word of God.
H. Mason will take the microphone over as long as the Lord lead him. And Bishop Mason, speak and pray for you tonight. Give your hearts to God and let God touch you. And let God use you there in your home. You're sick. Catch on by faith while this great man of God go as God lead him. Bishop C.H. Mason. Pastor Ford and all of the ministers and hearers, listeners, God in Jesus Christ tonight rebuke the day of evil and cast the devils out of the minds of all. We're here in the name of Jesus and we're glad to be here. We are thankful to God for his favor shown to us, and we are glad for his grace that's abounding. Now while you behold and look and wait, and you yonder in your beds, your hospital, victims tonight, God has laid it upon Jesus Christ to give himself his own life change conditions in your bodies and minds and spirits. Amen. We thank God for the fellowship of the Spirit tonight Amen. that gives us in him to think on others Amen. and to pray the mighty God to help and give unto you all that you may be delivered from that tormentor. God bless you. Jesus gave to the ministers and said, Go ye, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believest and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe not shall be damned. And these signs, he says, shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Not in devils, cast the devils out. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall pick up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. God rebuke death here tonight, and rebuke death there in you, and cast the devils out of your mind. And let your little ones look to God. This is a time that we need Jesus. We need the word of his wonder. We need the wisdom of the blood. We need the coming of the coming. Jesus the Savior. Satan, the Lord rebuke here. Yeah. Death, the Lord rebuke here. Yeah. An enemy, the Lord rebuke here. Yeah. A liar, the Lord rebuke here. Yeah. A shame, the Lord rebuke here. Yeah. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. God's anointing, giving it unto all. We thank God for his presence in the room and for his wonders. He giveth the latter rain of his will tonight. Woman, Jesus heal you. Yeah. Jesus rebuke death. God give you tonight. Woman, Jesus heal you. Your sins the Lord forgive. He casted out the day of evil. God rebuke death. The word of his presence tonight heal the sick. The word of his wisdom cast down the enemy of our souls. We are blessed to come and glad we are here. Yes, Lord. 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 We thank God for his glory. Oh, Abikito. Oh, Bikalo, Vishka, Dishkania, and the Oskalo, my Savior's anointing. The word of his kindness and greatness of his name makes ways for us tonight. May we rejoice to know that we have fellowship with him. And in the spirit of Jesus Christ tonight, we contend for the faith. We rebuke death. We bind the devil's chair with the word of God's wonder. The day of evil will be cast out of the mind. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thy yes, yes, mercy be shown tonight. A hey, bless be God. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful Savior. Now you sick people that are here in the room, lift your hands up. Let your will go up. Some of you are amen. Lift your hand. You there in the hospital, you yonder in your home today, that are sick and afflicted, lift up your hands. Glorify God and say, Lord, help me. Deliver my soul. 
cast the devil out of my mind and rebuke death. I beseech thee as my savior, cast the devil out of my mind. Loose me here tonight. Loose me and loose others. Loose death. God rebuke death. The devil's be cast. You know what? Jesus God gifts to death. If you can't, loose me. Loose God, little one. Loose the day of evil. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The coming of the Lord, the gift of God tonight, renew the spirits of his little ones here and give deliverance to all waiting, waiting tonight. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your greatness and great love shown. Yes, Lord. 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 Jesus, the mighty God, my soul live and enjoy the word of his will tonight. Man, Jesus, deliver you. The blood prevail. Jesus Christ, heal you. Your sins, the Lord forgive tonight. Death, the Lord rebuke you. Evil, be casted out of this mind. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out, Satan. Come on out. You the liar. Come on out. Out of the wheel. God rebuke you in this wheel. Come on out. A lying wonder tonight. Oh, God, deliver this man. Deliver the man. Deliver him. Deliver him. Give him saying yes tonight. Deliver the man. Deliver the man. Deliver the man. Deliver him, Jesus. My Savior's blood atone. Fixed over this cattle. Uh, my heart because of soda. Thank God for his wonders shown here. For the blood that's washing. Yes, Lord. 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 Our God in his word in the Bible that we read, I go first of all, prayer, supplication, intercessions, thanksgiving, be made for all men, for kings, for rulers, for governors, and for all that's in an authority, that we may lead a quiet, peaceable life with all godliness and honesty. Oh God, oh God, oh the spirit and peace of God tonight, the word and power in the blood, the mind of the consolator, the gift of God with us tonight, we receive and enjoy. We look to thee for help tonight. Your word is life and your word gives life. Your word makes and makes a way for us. Woman, you are healed tonight. Oh, oh, oh. Woman, Jesus healed you. Oh, God. Woman, you are healed. The blood prevailed. Yes, Lord. 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 Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Jesus. Wisdom of God tonight. Jesus. Peace of his presence. Jesus. God's gift to all. Jesus. Look on and pity tonight. Jesus. Renew the spirits of thy children tonight. Jesus. Comfort thee for this year. Jesus. In prayer these tonight. My soul look to you. My will serve you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Yes, Lord. 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 Wonderful Jesus. Yes, Lord. We receive and now enjoy thinking on the goodness and greatness of you tonight. My God, help this woman. Help her, Lord. Help her. How you lift up your hands. You are afflicted and you are afflicted. Yeah. Thank God. Lift your hands up. Lift them up, you afflicted ones that are in the room tonight. Lift your hands up, you afflicted ones. 
tonight, your wonders are shown to us, you hear a mouth, make the seal, I can be so, now strengthen the weak here, and renew the spirits of thy children everywhere, heal us, oh God, tonight, let the ministry be blessed tonight, let the will of God be done everywhere, let men return from their evil ways, let them cry out to the Father tonight, thy will be done, thy way here, oh Yes, Lord. 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 Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for the anointing of Jesus Christ tonight. Thou, my Savior, maketh us one with you, and we receive and forgive, we bless and lose. We thank you for thy constant, baby, spittle, God, every day and everywhere. And now renew the spirits of thy children here, and humble these everywhere. Loose them from the snares, and give them power over the evil one, and renew the spirits of thy children everywhere. We beseech thee as our friend, help us. We come to thee in this evil day, deliver us. We look for help from above. God send it on all. We ask it in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. What is up? What is going on, everybody? What is going on? Hope all is well. Y'all got glass on because this light is hurting my eyes. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. I will address the foolishness in just a second. Come on in. Make sure you share the video. Share the live. And let us get educated tonight. Because what I'm not going to do is have ignorance on my life and people talking crazy to me. All right. All right. Listen, make sure you share the live. Make sure you post it somewhere. Make sure you tell the people, come on, let's talk about this. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right. Y'all having fun? And, 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 and stop. Listen, I'm so glad that you all are here. Uh, Ra is in the background. He will be coming up in just a second. I am also going to be bringing Damon up, who has pictures and everything. But let me just explain something. Uh, And I'm not even going to let my spirit man get upset. But let me just address something. This is my house. Okay? This is my house. You get disrespectful and come for me, I'm going to check you right where you at. Now, if you are not here for this morning's lie and you missed it, and you choose to come on and be combative, I'm not going to entertain you. I'm going to find you and I'm going to block you. Praise God. God bless you. So with that being said, um, this morning's live, I want people to understand that we broke down this whole notion of what was evil, what was good. I made, we both of us, Ra and myself, we made, it made sense. So people coming on, talking all this rah, 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 rah stuff, we don't have time for you. Moderators, if you can, please remove them. Thank you so much. Now, uh, with that being said, we had a great show this morning and all of that. Um, We're here tonight to discuss. And so since I'm going to bring my brother back home, so y'all welcome Ra. And also his information is also 
is also in the chat. I mean, it's in the descriptions, okay? What's up, Ra? Hi, hi, hi. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night. How are you guys doing? I'm happy to be back on with you all. I'm just lighting a candle and setting myself up out here. And I'm going to sit down and get in the zone with you all. So I got these shades on because my eyes, I don't know what it was. It's like the light was just getting too bright this morning. Mm. I had to put on some shades because like my eyes just started acting weird. So I think it's because I'm always sitting in front of these things. So uh, I, it might be something else. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but I do. I, I wanted to also say, listen, y'all, if y'all missed this morning show, it was absolutely good. There was nothing negative about it, like nothing negative at all. We brought a lot of information. We help people understand what prayer is, what holiness actually is, what what the spiritual realm is and all this other stuff like this. It doesn't take away from who God is. It doesn't take away from who Jesus is. It it we're just trying to help you understand what what the old saints was doing. Yeah. Obviously y'all don't. Some people do. But some a whole bunch of y'all don't. Y'all just like to shake and bake. Okay? That's a good one. Shake yeah, and bake. They, they like, you know, they like to shake and bake and get slapped around and get hit and get Shots in the chest by Mother Estella Board and Gertrude Stacks and stuff, and then they get up off the flow and still don't know what's going on. But the folks, uh-huh. but the folks who's actually out here laying and live that life of talking in the spirit and talking to God, that's a different story. Yes. So yes. what I do, what I do want to start to show off with is this. Uh me and Rod, we know we've known each other for a long time. Oh, yeah. So I remember. A lot of this was before I came back to Florida. And Mm -hmm. a lot of this was when I came back. So me and Ra, my God, Mama, we all was talking different occasions. And so I just, you know, I began to write my spiritual prayers down. And, you know, I began to tell the Lord what I needed, right? I just, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we forget, right? We forget what we have prayed. So I wrote down some things that I had been praying to the Lord. You know, I write, I, you know, I, I got to get back on it. I've been slacking. You know, this is a rebuke to me. I've been slacking, but I had wrote my protection prayers down. Okay, so got that. So then I had I made some prayers and I put my little Jewish signet on top of it and just telling the Lord what I wanted. Right? You know, you know the Jewish signet, right? Yes. The, the two lines. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um. Right, Gene. I write the vision. So I wrote down where is it? Because I had to cross some stuff out because it already hey already came to pass. <laughs> Felt a mother Elsie Shaw known in the still a boy. So y'all I had wrote down Job Nation 2020. 50,000 people. Well, apparently we had 102. <laughs> we doing good. Okay. Um, Bible Wars, I mean, same thing. Uh, I, apparently, I still had a Patreon at that time. So, um, okay. Platform increase, Patreon, Job Nation 2020, 50,000 people. Uh, my YouTube subscription, 1.5 million. Well, we already passed. See, I can scratch this off now. We didn't pass 50,000. We on our way to 1.5, praise God. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, I wrote these things down and I went back today because I was trying to find my prayer book. I was trying to find my prayer journal. And as I was going over my stuff, so much stuff has come to pass. And what I'm basically saying to you all is as we're discussing a lot of this stuff, understand if you need to write your prayers and tell God, listen, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. Write that thing down. Mm -hmm. Hold it up. Put it in another book. Put it in a book that you keep all your prayer journals and stuff in. Yes. And, and as you're going through life, because you got to give God something to work with. Oh, yeah. You got to give God something to work with. So as you're going through life, you praying, writing down, okay, God, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. Do this. Da, 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 da. No matter what it is, you put that in your Bible and you keep praying, giving God something to work with. 
come back six months a year later. Boom. Oh, yeah. And, uh-huh. and, see, and see what is come see what has come to pass. So I I I brought I um I played Mother Estella Boy. I played Mother Elsie Shaw. I played Bishop C. H. Mason for a reason. Because these were very I, listen, I felt mother boy. I ain't gonna tell a lie. I was over here cutting up and I had the sheet across me for <laughs> them. Listen, I listen, mother boys. Hey, mother boys, mm-hmm. be all the way up now. Come now, come now. Listen, Hello? see when when people are praying like that, it's commands. You're commanding, not you're not saying this to you're commanding the spirit to come mm-hmm. in the room, come now, heal, deliver, set free. And when you have already laid in prayer, when you have already, you know. That's that's been your life. You feel what they feel when they touch you. You feel what they feel. I just I'm just I ain't gonna lie. I miss them old services, Mother Elsa. I remember her in prayer service. Let me tell you something. As a child, listen. As a kid, you always playing. You know what I'm saying? You you running around the church. You playing. You skipping, hopping. I'm going to tell you, this, I was at home. When I was a little kid. I was at home. Okay. And we was, me and my cousin, we was listening to some praise break music or some, or some Shirley Caesar. And I, I, what happened to Shirley Caesar happened to me. You got touched. I'm in the living room playing and dancing. Baby, I, I don't, I lifted up my hands because I call myself cutting up, right? I lifted up my hands and the spirit of the Lord hit me. Baby, I fell in that couch and just boo-hoo cried and was just calling on the name of the Lord. Y'all, y'all. It went through. Went all the way through. All the way through. All the way through. Oh, yes. What what, what are we saying tonight, y'all? And that is this. Y'all, this is real. Mm-hmm. People may not understand it or, or you know, why, why do you, why, why is voodoo on your own in church? Why? If you don't, if you don't have a concise clear understanding of the origin of the word. I ain't talking about the white people origin of the word. Yes, yes. I'm talking about your origin of the word. You can call it voodoo. You can call it prayer. You can call it consecration. Whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing. Same thing. When you go and talk to the Lord, the spirit, and you go before his presence, he gives you clear, clear understanding of what you need and how you need to get there. Yes. And you know, Ra, what I understand, what I'm really looking at is while I saw people in the comments with negativity, they come in not to understand, but they come in to disrupt. Now you said mm-hmm. something this morning that was so good. Some people just have that on the inside of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Never gonna change. Mm-hmm. They got the spirit just, and, and they're not called to do nothing, but, but be to do just that to do just that cause disruption. And it's for those that are viewing and to listening to say, "Hey, am I going to get distracted by this, or feed into that energy and fall into the pit, or am I going to fine tune my ears and open my spiritual eyes and say, okay, there has to be something more here.'" And, and let me go ahead and follow through, even if it's just for an exploratory purpose. Let me just follow through and see what's going on here. You know, and so getting into it, we got to get, I'm going I'm to start at the two t- main principles that will acknowledge that holiness and prayer. I want to build on that holiness and prayer, starting at holiness. Um, in the prior, in the first live, we talked about I, understanding that holiness is not just this putting on white clothes and coming to uh, uh, Pentecost Sunday and speaking in tongues and rolling on the floor and, and saying you have the oil. That's not holiness. You know, when we think about holiness, and you don't have to be an old mother or old deacon or pastor to, to live holy or to live in the energy of holiness, but it is when you make the internal agreement to align your life, your decisions, your actions, your character, with the divine purpose and will of God for your life. 
And let's segment here and understand that the will of God for our lives is not the same for everybody. God's will for my life is not the same for King John's. It's not the same for you guys that are listening and viewing. But you have to get into understanding what is your will and your purpose. And so when we look at the videos that were shown here, starting at Mother Boyd, Mother Boyd walks with a level of authoritative power. She knows she has the ability to call and command spirit and to stand in a gap yes. as an intercessor. To with her eyes, she's looking up to the heavens and to the four corners of the cathedral and seeing the things that your natural eyes cannot see. Right. Because what you don't understand that you can have the angels present in your room. Yes. Michael can be standing in the door. Peter could be standing in the door. Michael could be standing in the corner and they will not move. Until you ask and command. That was how they were designed and created. They will watch and wait until command happens. Yes. And so what you saw by Mother Boyd, she was commanding in spirit, saying, I see you. Mm -hmm. And you, we know that you have come because there's a need for you to be present at this time and at this very hour. Yes. And there is a parallel between the veil. But now I need to add some intention and some direction to your energy to flow in this place tonight. You understand when we talk about spiritual clothes, it equips you so that you stand protected and shielded. And your vibration, your physical vibration, aligns with the vibration of spirit. Go ahead, Josh. I don't want to cut you off. So, you know, this this is the reason why I know when I was a young boy, when I was, oh, I sound so old. When I was younger, um, you know, we because I'm from Arkansas, Memphis, Tennessee, Florida. So, you know, this this how I really know all this. Plus, uh, our, our bishop, God rest his soul, he going on now. Bishop Nichols, he's talking about this stuff, too. Um, there, you, you know, how back in the day we, you, you grandma would say, Well, take her on round at a uh, uh, sister, sister Julie May house, mm -hmm. around at a, uh, to Rosemary, them, you know, and 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 she know what to do. These people were spiritual people. Bishop Mason was a spiritual person, he knew what to do, Estella Boyd knew what to do, they knew they saw things spiritually they saw things that you could not see spiritually they knew how to call it out and they knew how to call it in oh yes you needed healing you needed some type of deliverance from whatever you was going through in your life they just said a word and they said go home it's already done just so while, while you go home baby they at home they didn't got some scriptures they didn't got some oil mm -hmm, they didn't put mm -hmm. right there and mother page. Yup. And they didn't put your picture right there. And Talk they, about it. and they just, re they, they rehearsing them scriptures, father, in the name of Jesus, yes. God, we call you right Surveilling. now, you know, and, and they just sitting there moaning and groaning and tapping into the spirit. And then this, this one, come with it, 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 walk with it, walk with it. So they're doing all of this, and then you done gone on, and you go to court, you go to the hospital, you go to your job, and it's already done just like that. Just like you, got, that. you got a boss that's bothering you. They say, "What, baby? What's his name? His name is Victor. What? What's his address?" And how they they what they do when you leave? They sit there for a couple of hours and they pray and they meditate. And they talk in the spirit. Yes, yes. Work. Well, what happened to the boss? He called off sick. He come back to work. Uh, I want to talk to you. I want to uh want to apologize for how I've been acting towards you. And do you need a raise? I mean, it's it's talk just about like it. That. And see, people don't understand spiritually. They don't understand spirit. And see, all of the old school people. All of the old school people who would tap in like that, all of the old school preachers and bishops and mothers and stuff who really had a connection to the divine, those people are pretty much none and existing anymore. And it's people like myself, people like Ra, and a, and, and a handful of other people who really got it. But when we tell you this stuff, you say, oh, that's, that's it's not... It's hard to believe. Yes. It's hard to believe, you know, and then, and, and I wanted to go down the line and even now I'm talking about the next mother, 
Mother Shaw. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, watch your hands, you guys. Watch your hands. Mm -hmm. Her hands are working. Mm -hmm. When you look at the modern day practice of Reiki, which is not a modern day, but it's modern day known, but it's a very ancient practice of Reiki, the operation of movement of element through the hands. If you understood that she was using keys, let's talk about keys in the spirit. Because when we talk about devotion, a lot of us growing up did not like devotion. But you didn't realize that those mysteries of the hymns and the groaning were pulling keys and opening up doors that your words could not begin to manifest. You understand? It allowed your spirit to elevate out of this body to ascend to a place higher than yourself. Mm -hmm. To open up a door to communicate, not just to communicate, but to see and to hear, not just to see and to hear, but to also to move and manipulate and manifest. You understand? So when you watched and listened to Mother Shaw praying, as she began to climb up her ladder of Jacob's ladder in her prayer, every door that she opened, she came with a different key, a different groan, a different hand. You understand? And as she began to move and operate in the spirit with her hand, open and closing, dismissing, reversing, turning around. She began to close it off with an affirmation. Tell the Lord, yes, and I thank you. Mm -hmm. You understand? God, we receive you at this time. You understand? This is voodoo. This is what we do in voodoo in the pre Ganim when we open up service. We must vibrate and call the spirit, the vibration, and we clap. You understand? And then she started to move and operate. So when she's praying for your womb, she starts to become a surgeon with the hands. You understand? When she's praying for your mind and your eyes, she becomes, uh, 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 her hands become the hand of the most high to move and operate and she can't touch everybody in the room. So she must move in the air. You understand there's mysteries. And so when we talk about effective versus ineffective prayer, it's not just the practice of prayer, mm -hmm. but it's the belief, it's the affirmation, it's the authoritative power, but it's also the operation and the movement. You must know how to move energy. That's why yoga is so powerful. You must know how to move energy. And this is what the mother began to teach you and show you it's not about how hard you can pray it's not about how uh, you can get into it right you understand but it's about fine-tuning so when you start to hear them start to channel and speak in tongues it don't sound like your tongues of today they were speaking angelic tongues tongues of old tongues that produces binary codes of the heavens you understand so as she began to climb up now even father mason as they began to climb up the ladder higher and higher this is what you call the tree of life. Your vibration and language must change because you must align with the vibration of God in the spirit. And it is not of this English tongue that we speak. You understand? When you talk about Father Mason, he was an authoritative mover and shaker. You understand? And so he was able to see like x-ray vision. And become a conduit. A conduit is a person that stands as a medium, an in-between, a, a vessel in between two spaces, two times, two rams, two dimensions. Yes. Or multidimensional. And as he saw and identified, he commanded the spirit of God and the angels to work and intercede. But it still took you on the receiving end to believe that it is possible. So that it can become real in your life. That is spirit, not religious practices. That is spirit. I, I I am convinced because this morning was so good. Kwame, um, Kwame, inbox me your page so I can see if I can try to fix this because I don't know. I cannot see you. Um, you know, like the Bible says, many are called, few are chosen. A lot of us that are chosen for this assignment and it's not a lot of us, but the ones that are chosen for the assignment, they, this conversation is, it's like first and second nature. We get it. We understand it. We're not even arguing because we understand what, what it takes to do. I remember when, um, somebody was trying something and I was telling mm -hmm. him and I had to go in my cabinet and I had to make up a little mixture and they was trying to put some put some stuff on my house. And I had to take that mixture and I had to go apply it to the things that they put outside my house. Now, I told him about it afterwards because the spirit told me. And when I say spirit, I'm talking about the spirit of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 and the spirit, you know, the divine. 
whether it was one of my ancestors or whatever, the Lord told me to do this, do this. And I had to go apply this because someone was upset with me and they was trying to come to my house. Mm -hmm. So the thing, Tremaine, inbox it to me. I want to see it. Uh, the thing about it is this. To the people that really understand the power of prayer, intercession, interceding, and the spirit, everybody can't do this. Y'all think this is fun and games. Y'all spirituality. Oh, la, 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 la. Every last one of these people that was on this screen, they, did, they didn't have no music. They didn't have all that carrying on. They talked and walked in the spirit. Oh, they, yes. they talked. Oh. Bishop Mason didn't have no keyboard, no organ, no drums behind him to get the people emotionalized. See, when you got enough power, you don't need no music. What you said. Mm -hmm. When you got enough power, you don't need no organ and synthesizer. You grab the mic and do what the Lord told you to do. Mm -hmm. Do what the Spirit told you to do. See, because in the spirit ain't no drums. In the spirit, ain't no keyboard, ain't no, ain't no get guitar, ain't none of that stuff. When God tells you, this why, this why y'all gotta sit back. This why this why I use my platform for right here. Y'all gotta sit back and watch these so-called prophets. Yes. Because when you really got it, you'll need all the extra stuff. When God is really speaking to you, Erica. When God is really speaking to you, he don't need the extra stuff. And okay. understand this, people that's listening to me tonight. When when the Lord has something to say, he's going to talk and he's done. You don't add this, that, and the third, and blah, 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 blah. No, God don't run off at the mouth. No. That's why I don't understand these all these prophetic services. Don't don't call it a prophetic service and talk about, and I heard the Lord say, no, the spirit told you. I don't know what spirit, but the spirit told you, and, and that's how you operate. Yes. It can be a so-called uh uh prove all things. Huh? The Bible says prove, I said the Bible says to prove all things. You understand, and even when we talk about prophecy, the spirit will come to confirm that the spirit man had already revealed to you. You understand some things may be new and added information and more so precise direction, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't just be new, 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 new information because your spirit man is already speaking in you. If you already have a connection with God confirmation, right? Whatever, whatever somebody's coming to you and telling you it should be confirmation. And if God has something particular to tell you, should nobody, I mean, it should be like, okay, this, this, this is about to come to pass and it should, it should bear witness in your spirit. Yes. Yes. A lot of folks out here saying stuff and I've been in services. I bet when I was in Memphis, it was a, it was a lady. She was getting uh, a word of prophecy by this young man. And the woman looked at him and she said, that ain't me. She was like, Ooh. oh, you're something to get this and this going to happen. She said, oh, no, sir, that ain't me. My mm -hmm. son's alive. He is well. And I rebuke that now. Yes. Prove all things. Listen, it's like you have got to be in the spirit for real or people are going to call you out and check you. And you better hope you're in the right place because they're going to whoop your behind. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people have got to stop playing when it comes down to spirituality. This is why this part of the church has started to leave. And all you see is dancing and a bunch of noise because they don't know how to be spiritual. They know how to shout you. They know how to dance you. And they say, speaking your heavenly language. And you don't even know what you're doing. But see, the old saints knew how to usher you into a place and guide you where you need to be. This new era, people that want to be mm -hmm. renegades, people that want to do what they want to do, and people that just want titles and positions, they just dancing and shouting to people. Come on, hit that organ. Da -da 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 -da. And, and there we go. And this is why we are becoming weak because we don't know how 
to labor in prayer. We don't know how to live a lifestyle. When I say holiness, it is not, it is not white stuff covering your hair, all of this. No, it is a lifestyle of communing with the divine yeah. God. It is oh, yeah. a lifestyle of you staying connected. I may not always read my scriptures. I may not always read my prayers, but me and the Lord are staying connected. Because Mother Shaw spoke on that. Yeah. You know, she said, you are the living word. When I went through my initiation into the priesthood um, in one of my walks, one of my last assignments was given to me by Joseph, the, 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 the man with many colors that was sold by his brothers. And he had given to me the bread. And he said, I'm giving to you the bread of life. And it is for you to share daily, to eat and receive, but also to share daily. And, you know, I went and asked my pointing mother, my, the person that's leading the initiation, you know, what do you think that means? And she said, what well, is for you to read your Bible every day and share the word and preach the word? Da, 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 da. I said, OK, I've done that, been doing that for a long time. I said, there's something deep. I said, God is telling me something different. So then I went and asked the bishop. And the bishop says, I asked him, I said, do you believe that the living with the God can give you the living word every day as living manna from heaven? He says, yes, that is considered the living word. And so piggybacking on what Mother Shaw said, when she said, you are the living word, that means every day that when you wake up, before your feet touch the ground, God is speaking to you. To the time that you go to bed, God is speaking to you. But you must align yourself to receive and be able to be sensible to the voice of God. And starting for those of you that are trying to build that up, how do we get there? How do we start? It starts with prayer and meditation. You don't have to chant Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, but that may work for you. You may need to do some Ohms and Nam Shri's. That may work for you, and that's okay. But if you need to turn on some Tasha Cobbs and some praise and worship with, and turn burn some little sage, Apollo Santo, and light a, a, a white candle, or a cotton candle, you understand, or do some aromatherapy and start to travail in spirit and listen to the voice of God. If by the time you don't finish that session, you don't get revelation, something is wrong. And you start to build that up into your daily life. Now, I you want build you, that up in your daily life. Right. I want you to talk about real quick because, Dame, okay, Damon is here. He he has the uh, the pictures and stuff about Bishop Mason. So, uh, Damon, uh, Damon, we're going to come back to that in a second. I want you to talk about the the purpose of stones, sage, yeah. yes. and, and and oils, because I, I, I don't want the people just to hear that come from me, I, because I talk about this a lot, especially when the folks then pissed me off when I got to read some people and I got to really bring out my old and, and be like, do you see this? Yeah. So yeah. I want you to talk about the stones, sage, yeah. oil, and, and 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 the scents and stuff. Go ahead. No problem. So as you guys study the table that Father Mason had on his table, you will see there were stones there and different elements. Let me first reveal to you that stones and working with metaphysical science is not a European thing, but is in fact an African thing. That when you start to uncover the red soil of the continent of Africa, you will in fact find every gem and stone known to man. You understand? And when you look at the Old Testament, the Bible says, if my people do not call out to me, the rocks will cry out to me. That lets you know that the very stones in the earth have properties and are living. You know, just as the teas in the bush that we drink, just as the different types of water that we consume. You understand the stones that we operate and work with also have different properties, such as clear quartz, for example, bringeth clarity. You understand the amethyst deals with the prophetic vision. You understand then you have the uh, ruby you, that deals with elements of the root chakra that grounds you. You understand you have green jasper that deals with the elements of the heart or rose quartz that deal with elements of the heart. You understand and what, how do you activate and use these things? It's not just a stone alone, but it's to one, program it with your intentions. Second, charge it with the elements of the earth, whether you bury that, put it in water, put it in salt, bury it in your backyard or charge it by the sun or the moon. You understand along with your prayers and your petition so that with God's help, through the medium of the crystal, it will aid you in your spiritual progression. 
You understand? So it's not anything to fear, but it's something that is an additive to help us to have clarity, to have elements of protection, to have elements of boosted vibrations, because living in this plane, different things that we come in contact with, different people, different situations and scenarios that we face can alter our frequencies and, and, and damper our spirit, man. And so we have to use certain things to feed us back. Ra, somebody talking about some Bible verse. Now, you remember when we talked about the stones? Now, yeah. in the breastplate, those were stones. Yes. Different color yeah. stones. Yes. In the breastplate. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're not going to act ignorant on this live. Well, I can't say that because I don't know y'all and I don't know what, what level of where y'all at in y'all walk. Or what and if I had the opportunity to share my screen, so I'm using my phone, I would actually find the scriptures for you. But at the end, I will include the actual detailed information from biblical texts. You understand that will support the use of stones, that will support the use of frankincense and myrrh, and the incense that we burn. When we talk about sage, sage is, is a spiritual bleach. You understand? And when we talk about sage, it is a property that will clear any and everything good and bad. So, it's, it's a very neutral thing. Sage is not anything to fear. If you got anything good in your house, vibration is going to clear that. If you have anything bad, it's going to clear that. But then when you get into elements of Palo Santo, Palo Santo is a clearing, but it also strengthens the prayer vibration. It strengthens the angelic and the ancestral energy in your home. When we use the elements of frankincense and myrrh, you understand frankincense and myrrh is used, one, for exorcisms to get rid of wicked and foul spirits. It is second used as a healing property, because if you inhale the smoke of the frankincense and myrrh, it will alter the oxygen that flows in your brain and flows to your blood. You understand? And so that also allows you to have a clear mind and clear consciousness. You understand? And so then when we get into the element of copal, copal is what you used to call the angels. Mm -hmm. You understand? When you're using copal, it will, set, it will set a vibration in your space that you can hear a pin drop. You understand? And so why did they use these certain things? When you talk about the synagogue and you talk about Solomon's temple, when you talk about Mount Sinai, I guarantee you, you, I bet you with everything within me, they were burning incense. They were pouring libation. They were using elements of wine and alcohols to consecrate and center the place. They were using things of, they didn't have candles as we use. They use oil lamps. Mm -hmm. So that's why back in the South, you will see a lot of the old folks using the oil lamps. That mm -hmm. is very biblical and very African, you know, and again, but we've been separated, not the Catholic church, not the Lutheran church, not the AME church, not the CME church, but the Pentecostal movement has been separated from spiritism. And we've been taught to fear spiritism. And so the only way that we have access to understand these things is to go and look at metaphysical things. But if you take your time and read Matthews, if you take your time and read Isaiah, if you take your time and read Psalms, Psalms will give you distinct instructions as to what you need to use in your workings. Yes. What time of day you need to be operating your prayers. What time of the year and month you need to be operating your prayers and your workings. So these things are not far-fetched or separated from Christian belief and principle. You understand? But it's a matter of uncovering. So when we talk about opening up your eyes and renewing your mind and it's strengthening your spirituality. Even the mother Shaw spoke about that, opening up your spiritual eye. Mother Boyd spoke about that, opening up your spiritual eye. You won't be able to read the text on the page and understand if your ears are not open. And you must see with your ears and hear with your eye. Catch that well. So if you notice when you're reading scripture, it sounds like a voice is reading, talking back to you. If you pause in your junctions, you will start to get revelation as to what God is really trying to reveal to you. You understand, but we've been growing up hearing the same sermons, hearing the same few scriptures, tossed, flipped, reversed, brought up and brought down with no true substance and edification. And so when we talk about the Bible saying prove all things, God even said, Jesus even said, you must prove all things. He let you know that if you're just listening to the doctrine of man, you won't get it. If you're not studying to show yourself approved, you won't get it. And studying does not just mean going to Bible study. But it means going home in your private time and dissecting the word and understanding the word and going out into the elements just as Jesus did. He wasn't sitting in the synagogue 24-7 on a Saturday, on a Friday night. But he was out in the elements and the mountains. So why is it that you find peace at the water? Why is it that you find clarity when you go hiking in the mountains? 
Why is it that you get you you feel a shift in your spirit when you go down into the valley? There's principles there that you must understand, and it's right in the word that you're reading. If you if you want to stay there, you know. But these are things that our ancestors, the old folks, knew and understood. Why? Not just. Because, yes, the book of Enoch is powerful, not just because of the church, but you must understand they were very still closely related to the African way. Father Mason comes from the Delta of Mississippi. That is Congo energy. That is Native American Cherokee, Blackfoot, Ch Choctaw energy. You understand? That is Creole energy there. And so there has to be a blending. There was a lack of vocabulary. There was a lack of language, but there was an instinct understanding because we were trained and programmed in these things. They're innate in our DNA. And so when we think about King Jives being inspired, receiving revelation to do these things in his house and do certain operations to cover himself, you understand And the mother's going down into prayer and fasting and seclusion. You understand and doing lock-in and travailing. These things had a purpose and a place by direction of the spirit. When we went to see the mothers and the bishops to get our business fixed, you understand? Some of them was doing numbers too. When we was going to get our business fixed, every case was different. Every situation was different. So they had to be sensible enough to spirit to know how to deal with your case. Because your case is different than the case before and it's going to be different than the case that's getting ready to come. So just to, to reiterate, I, I know you see it too. Just to reiterate, uh, what we're saying, a lot of people, they're not going to understand. People with limited understanding, limited capacity, and if the only thing that you're doing is going with what your scripture is saying, you need to go with all your scriptures. Yes. Yes, all. Toot by guy. Toot by guy. Let's pray. Every piece, you cannot divide and separate because you understand history and laws too. Because some of us are still trying to live according to Levitical laws that were abolished when the Christ consciousness came about. We're still beating and blasting each other according to Levitical laws that were abolished according to the Christ. You understand? And so you must read the scriptures entirely with an understanding to know what to deal with and what to put down. Yeah. And understand why things were and why things were not. And also... What people really truly need to get is that this understanding of the spirit, everybody's not going to get it because people are limited in their understanding. They are limited in how they, um, wait, yeah, what it all consists of. Understanding that when people, you know, I really want to go there with y'all, but it's like, I don't want to waste my time, but for people that can get it, get it. Cause I promise you, you talk about, I'm not praying to my ancestors. Well, who do you think that they, they was praying to in the Bible? Who do you think that when, when Jesus was praying to his father, I, I mean, it's, it's so much, it's so much. Someone that, commented that they're not, I can't see the comments. Did you say that someone said they're not going to pray to their ancestors? Yeah, somebody said they're not praying to their ancestors. Can I address that for a moment? Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, for the individual, I can't see your name at this time. I greet you in peace and in love. Um, and I understand your fears and your lack of understanding when it comes to dealing with your ancestors. But I give you this, and I, and I, I want to give you food for thought. When you look at the world outside of Christianity, Realizing that Christianity is a rather newer religion compared to the rest of the world. How is it that you, as a black man or black woman, could denounce who you are and boldly accept what you were told to believe? It's just food for thought. You understand how, how could we do that? And even if you're looking at the Bible, even all throughout the Old Testament, ancestors are prevalent. And even we, growing up in Sunday school and Bible study, were taught to sing to these ancestors mm -hmm. and forget about our own. We, and so I make a distinct parallel to the East. As I mentioned in the previous video, the Eastern world, that even those that are Christians, the Indians, the Koreans, the Chinese, all of those people, still when they go home, Still, when they go to the cemeteries, 
to visit their loved ones. They are giving libation and light and prayer and gratitude. It's not to say that your ancestors are God. It's not saying that you are placing your ancestors before the creator God because they're not the creator God. Correct. But they work in assistance and interceding and standing in the gap for you, for your generations to come. And realizing that you are, whether you believe it or not, we are reincarnations of our ancestors. The things we like, the things we are attracted to, the things that we desire, the, the, the jobs that we work, you understand, are typically and most likely 95% of the time are re-embodiments of the work that your ancestors before you did. Whether you are representing your mother's line or your father's line or even sometimes both. I can't convince you nor force you to worship your ancestors or acknowledge or give gratitude to your ancestors. But to give a word of thanks and gratitude is no different than giving thanks to the angels or no thanks than giving thanks to Jesus Christ because guess what? He was born of a woman and special like myself and special like King Jives and special like the rest of you. Born of a woman with special gifts and ability that died in the flesh. And did rise. So therefore, even in praising the name of Jesu, the Christ, it is still, in fact, praising an ancestor that was elevated, just like Harriet Tubman was elevated. Just like others that came before us were elevated. And so, yes, you may have some ancestors that were some wicked, nasty people, as we all do. So when we talk about acknowledging the ancestors, we must identify that everyone that died in our family did not make it to the higher realms. So we're only simply calling those that made it to the higher realms that are aiding and assisting us. The ones that backbited, stabbed, harmed us, brought pain and destruction. We leave them where they are. And we even pray that God would deal with them in spirit to elevate their consciousness and their, their deeds. Because how can you be Christ consciousness and not forgive? How can you be Christ consciousness and not try to find a greater good in your brother and your sister? Mm-hmm. How can you be Christ consciousness and not put yourself in the other person's shoes to try to understand why they may have made the flaws that they made? You understand? So when it comes to dealing with the ancestors, if they were not for them, where would we be? It's just that thought. If it was not for them, where would we be? And mm-hmm. when you think about Big Mama and, and the bishop and the mothers of the church, who you think outside of the Christ was visiting them to give the messages? And tell so and so X Y by Z. Yep. It was your big mama. It was your great great grandmama coming to Mother Shaw and Mother Boyd. You know, in the night in all white, telling them to speak, see about my child. You understand. And this so is, that's food for thought. And this is why that we had those people. I know I'm an '80s baby, so I know about this. I'm from the South. Uh, right, right you from the South too? My 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 mother, mother is Haitian, and her father is American from De- from Greenville, Mississippi, from the Delta, and my father is Jamaican, so I'm Caribbean and American, so I have Southern roots and Caribbean roots. So, I get it. I do understand it. And so, what was it? Cash? Was it cash? Cash pack? I, I'm the reason I speak like this is because it's a lot of people that's coming on to be. Uh, defensive and instead of trying to understand here we are in America we're losing so much of our history especially here in Florida yes they're wanting to take out history the the what little history that we have they want to take that out of our schools they want to take that out of our college systems they're trying to take everything that consists of us out And then they want to tell us our history. So then when we talk about our history, it's foreign to some people because they have never heard it before. So now those of us who have been who have been enlightened. Yes. This is why we do and say what we say. Yes. Yes. We have to take it back to the origin of who we are exactly because so much of our history, if not almost all of our history has been erased. My God. So for those of us who know history, for those of us that the spirit speaks to and say, this is this, this is this, this is why it's very important for us to teach in this time. Because again, 
Why some of us operate naturally so, and some of us operate spiritually so, and some of us are dual. We can yeah. operate in both. And yeah. It's, it's very important for us to be able to flow like we flow. And we have to be able to understand the difference between those that are operating in a foreign, in a foreign nature, like false people, false teachings and false prophets. People are here telling you stuff and you know that that's not right. Mm -hmm. if all because they're washed up by the glamour and the materialistic things. They think that's the anointing and the blessings of God. You don't know what agreements and pacts <laughs> folks made to get what they have. You understand? And when you truly look at the life of Christ, being Christ consciousness, he was a minimalist. When you think about the saved and sanctified, those that lived in holiness, they were minimalists. Look Man. at Bishop Mason's suit. Look at the clothes of Mother Boyd. Look at the ones that labored in the vineyard. You understand? They were not looking to be pretty glitz and glamoured. Because the true joy, the true blessing was seeing you delivered, seeing you healed. Hearing and being in the presence of God. Wait, 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 Ron, let me cut you off. And you know what's so funny about what he's just saying right now? Because I said this. For those people that ha are that are become prosperous and they become, you know, wealthy or whatever, these people sit in their pulpits and you got to see everything they got on. You got to see all of this stuff. What we have to understand as people, spiritual people, a lot of people will get distracted by what you got on. Yes. A lot of people get distracted by your, 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 you got Gucci, this Gucci, that Gucci, 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 Louis Vuitton, all of this stuff like that. And people get distracted. Now people teach this prosperity stuff. And now we've gone, we've moved away from real in-depth spirituality. And we got into, uh, 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 Prosperity teaching it, prosperity and pray in tongues. People don't know what they're doing. And they well, can I tell you where they come from? You have to think about the great migration. When the great migration starts to happen, and so much people left the South and went to these big cities and went to the North and left these small towns and went to the major parts of their states, they needed to assimilate to get a job. Yeah. They needed to forget about their old ways to become acceptable in society. So because now they got an acceptance of society and they're elevating in life, that is a blessing and glory of God. So why do I need to bother with these old times away? Why do I need to bother with those crazy things grandma used to say? Mm -hmm. You understand? Because look how she living compared to how I'm living. That's right. the mentality. Yes. So we yeah. get distracted and confused. So I'm getting ready to bring Damon on. So y'all, Damon is coming on uh, with this other information about this information. What's up, brother? Hey, bro, bro, bro. What's up? <clears throat> None. So, so uh, you got uh, you got the you got the information about Bishop Mason. Um. Yes. Um. The, my aunts don't want to send the pictures because they are in the pictures, and this was a ritual ceremony that he was affiliated in. That was with. Her mother, which is my grandmother. Um, it all goes back to um, um, uh, the word that's sitting on the tip of my tongue. You use it, uh, you said it a lot, and, and it goes back to um, um, Bishop. Um, he said on the tip of my tongue. He was excommunicated because of his. his, uh, okay. his um, Carter Pearson. Carter Pearson, okay. So all of that pretty much goes into what happened when uh, Bishop Mason was summoned. He was summoned to South Africa because of his teachings and because of the things that he was doing with the oils and the teachings of that. So they brought him over there and showed him how to master it, to be able to do the things that he was doing. So during the time when... He was going into his tongues, which was they saying that uh, if, if you remember, they were saying that uh, Bishop Mason had uh, had a type of tongue that he just said one thing. And if you went to yeah. anything in his presence, you was healed immediately. Mm -hmm. That's because not only did he speak in the actual tongue, but he actually when he went there to learn the actual natural tongue, he allowed his actual inner being to actually relieve and to re so it goes back to this. 
They teach and they preach that we're not supposed to study the stars and the things of that nature. But it goes back to this. When Jesus gave up the ghost, he looked upon the stars. He didn't look to the earth. He looked upon the stars. And he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? See, what you failed to realize was, as they broke it down to me is, when Jesus Damon. did that, when... Damon, Damon, this is about to irritate the living crap out of me. I don't, this is what I don't understand. If I give you sources, this is about to really rub me the wrong way. Cause I used to do this in Bible. Pass the test, pass the test, pass the test. Keep your grace, okay. save your grace, save your grace. Do not slip tonight. <laughs> not today. Eyes <laughs> present tonight. Not okay. slipping tonight. Hold your peace. Go ahead, Dave. Save your grace. David, you going. Go ahead. You got me rocking. So, and the aspect, okay, you remember when we was on the live and I was playing to you as uh, far as the ritual dance, um, you saw the video that was going viral and they were saying that it was a ghost that was up in there and I was telling you, you know that this is actually guys that actually went deep within their spiritual realm and they allowed, it's not their self, it's not the flesh that is actually dancing, they allowed their spirit to actually come with within and dance and relief and bring forth what is actually there. Bishop Mason did the exact same thing. That's what we're, you call voodoo manifestation, exactly. spirit possession. We're, we're, taught Mother Stone in the church. Too. we're taught in the church that voodoo and hoodism is practicing witchcraft of dealing with the dark arts of pulling up demons of things of that nature. Uh, not saying it doesn't have a part of that in it. Everything has a part in it. I hate to say it. There cannot be any good without evil. If good cannot exist without evil, evil cannot exist without good. Feed the people tonight. Come with it, David. Come with it, David. Come. Get mad. They said there's no evil in God. Okay. Read Matthews again and read Revelations again. I'm sorry. Study the book well. Keep going, David. As okay, I grew up coaching, but I'm first generation full of gospel. So to see the things that, for instance, my dad and them don't even like us to use the J word when we reference the son. No, they don't. They use Yahweh. Ye or Yahweh, use yes, why? Yes. They yes. do not, for the simple fact, J do not yes. coexist hey, Damon, in the Hebrew Damon, language. Damon, what are you again? What What is your, what is your parents? Huh? What are your parents? My father is Borzulu. What what is that? My father is what technically it would be considered one of the true tribes of Israel. No, 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 no. You miss what I'm saying. Your father is an African, a real yeah, true a real African. The the real so for instance, the real Africans, when they reference names out of the Bible, they reference the names, not what it is in our Bible for us, the King James. If for instance, they say Jesus, they say Yeshua. Yahweh, Elohim, who is Jesus? Adonai, yes, yes, who yes, is yes, 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 yes. I have to say, I'll break it down yes. to you um, as this. Uh, as my dad said, the reason we don't say Jesus is because the, the, the face that they show you over there as Jesus is a man of a pope mm. who had great vengeance, who, who was nasty, who done all types of things that was not Christ like whatsoever. They, they, not only that, they took the rituals of the things that they knew that they learned from those that they took in captivity. Because what was happening, see, I'm gonna mess it up and mess it up a lot of people's heads. Because what a lot of people don't know, the reason why a lot of Africans and people from the from the islands are so tied up with the state of Florida and Louisiana is because those are the only two states that actually still speak. Culture. I'm gonna go ahead and say culture, not history. For history is his story. Whose story is it? White man's story. And what happened was the ones that they got over here realized that okay, we can't get you because you got us over here, but we got another way we gonna get you. So we're gonna use you with our.
spiritual gifts and our spiritual warfare. And we're going to get you with our spiritual two tongues. Because I hate to say it, this Holy Bible basic instructions before leaving earth is nothing but a book of divine spells. You can use it to do good and you can use it to do bad. That's why he said, be careful what you say of your mouth. Because it can be a two-edged sword. It can do both good and it can do both bad. So you have to study to show the word yourself approved. That's why he keeps saying, study to show thyself approved. Come on. Don't go to the church, oh, because Bishop so-and-so said this. I got to do it. No, 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 no. Go back home and restudy that. And that, and when you restudy it, restudy it with your spirit. You Don't go. study it with your flesh. Study it with your spirit and allow God and guess who else? The ancestors manifest in you. Because guess what? God is not going to bless you unless your ancestors are there to help you get to it. Jesus broke that down in the scriptures. No man can get to the Father unless you get through me. And I hate to tell you, Jesus is your ancestor, my brother and my sister. Yes, who I is your ancestor. Don't be sitting here all because uh, he got all the this, he got all the that. I hate to say it, he put in his word himself that he was in hell and they was burning the hell with their Bibles in their hand and they came to him and they asked him, Jesus, I did this, I did that. He said, you did all of that, but who called you? I, I thank you for doing all that you did, but who called you? You misunderstood the excitement because all of us received the calling because we are born of him. But you have to understand what is your undefined calling within him by knowing what your show. That's why they said it irritates me as well, bro, because God made it so easy for everybody. He said the, the, the faith, the size of a mustard seed, man, a mustard seed. Did this boy really just say this is gaslighting? Y'all, I'm done. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so done. I can't. Is it offering time? Is it offering time yet? Baby, I can't. I, I really can't do this. Boy, you know what? I can't. You cannot. You listen. <laughs> oh, my God. Bishop you cannot. Mason, help. Listen, I'm, I'm going to show you just how powerful Bishop Mason ended up becoming. <sighs> Bishop Mason does something that no other preacher in the United States have ever done. After he went and he manifested his gift that God poured within him, he came and turned his church into a temple where you can always come and worship and speak to him and dwell with him and be with him at all times. Because you want to know why? Somebody said it earlier, and I couldn't wait to get out work so I could confirm it. Over across seas, and I hate to say it, it's not just over in Africa. It's in Jamaica. It's in Haiti. It's in come, come, come. It's in Puerto Rico. It's in come, Spain. Come, come, come. Your mother and your father passed. We're not taking you to no cemetery. We bury you on the land that you built and that you sweated your blood and tears on. And you're going to be, every time we have problems, guess who we going to? We go into the altar where we laid our parents in, and we're going to speak to them. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to relieve our message to him. Why? Because they're in the spiritual realm where they can actually take that to him. We can't really talk to him like we really want to because he don't deal with us because we're in this old wicked flesh. But due to we so weak minded because we let the white man come and take our word and twist it to benefit him, that's why we still in modern day slavery upon today. Slavery never ended. They now using our spiritual gifts, our spiritual talents, et cetera, and using it against us. You sit there now, I'm gonna be honest. When we was growing up, bro, when we went to the church, when tongues were being spoken, church, the tongues were being spoken by us. Now they trying to speak the tongues, but ain't no manifestations coming from it because that spirit is not real. Well, they took on, they took on the dance. They took on the, you know, they took on all of our attributes and everything. And that's why. Auntie said buttons aren't working. Okay, so Auntie, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this tonight. Let me go and put subscriber mode on, and we're gonna save it just like that. All right, Auntie, is subscriber mode on? I'm not doing this tonight. I'm really not doing this tonight. Um, let me see something.
because I I don't want I don't want this I don't want this to be interrupted. Um, is Kwame in the chat? So, anyways, Damon, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Damon. So, there's going to be another thing. There's a reason. What's the largest denomination in Africa? Everybody says Muslims. No, it's not. It's actually Christianity. You want to know what denomination they fall under, though, in Christianity? Church of God in Christ. You want to know why? Because the founder of Church of God in Christ, when he came, he took and he learned and he learned it not to do bad, but to do good. I hate to say it, that power that he had, it's no longer there. Because y'all want to place it in the closet because you don't want to face the simple fact you would never be able to have the power and to be able to do the things that Bishop never. Mason has ever been able to do. Never. None of them would never be able to do it. I hate to say it, it was only one that was close to do it. And he wasn't even really that close to do it. Bishop Mason was considered one of the most powerful preachers of his time. I hate to say it from what my auntie said, what my grandma used to say, when he came down there, he just walked down the aisles and touched people. Didn't even say nothing. Just touched them. But because you know he what? went and learned. He did what the scripture said. Study. I hate to say if you study it, God would bring, he would reveal it to you. In the scripture, y'all remember when Joseph was assigned by the angel to take Jesus and Mary into Egypt at the age of 12? <laughs> he had to study what the priesthood to come back and do what he had to do. Then he went into Thailand and went into India <laughs> to also learn and study. You understand? So this is not a mystery. This is solid facts. We would never be able to, the things that was happening during those times, where our grandparents, when we was growing up and we used to hear the stories of our grandparents saying what their parents and I went, went through, and we wonder how did y'all survive doing that? Because if I was born to that time, I would have been home. How did y'all do it? Why they, how they was able to do it? It's because they had true divine spiritual guidance. They weren't getting milked. They weren't getting fun fed the honeycomb. I hate to say it, y'all you, you, pretty much said it. Um, Mother Boyd, Bishop Mason, they didn't wear mixed linen. Nowhere in the world you finna sit up here and try to and run the anything to me and you got all these things that he completely said that he do not want you. <clears throat> A lot of people don't want to talk, don't talk about it, but Bishop Mason and his wife did not even sleep in the same room. She was talk on one about side of the house and he was on the other. Other. Old practices. Very old practices. Only time very they slept together practices. when it was time for them to go ahead and make a child. But that was a sacrifice that they decided to make. Because that, that was the sacrifice that was asked. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. That was a sacrifice that they decided to make because of what the Spirit had instructed for them to do. That Agreed. See, now what we're seeing is people are making it scripture based, like, oh, this guy, you can't sleep. No. When people, when people of that particular level yes they were in there and they would you know they was there they were doing their job mm -hmm. so they didn't have time every time to go sleep around go get them some and everything because they were staying in their in their element mm -hmm. you got people out here now and see this is where the problem lies in when people are out here sleeping with all these folks sleeping with these kids and stuff there's no discipline there's no discipline. There's no order. And you cannot be really connected to the divine. You cannot be connected to the God of God, gods. And then you do what you want to do. That's because you don't take them serious. Mm -mm. You don't take them serious. And then what happens is when y'all start dropping dead or plagues start coming on the earth, then you feel some type of way. And then you're like, oh, that ain't got nothing to do with God. Okay, keep playing. Keep mm -hmm. playing with it. Keep playing with it. Mm -hmm. 
He keep trying to wake you up, but you refuse to listen because you keep following what Mr. So and so so say, what Reverend So and so say, what so and so so and so say. But what's what's going to happen when that time comes and you see that they're not in that number? Million dollar question. Wow. Hey, hey. Do you know how many churches fall apart when they lead us fall? Because they were so codependent, they didn't learn anything. They sat there on the pew and did not truly learn and search the spirit and prove the spirit and travail in the spirit and build themselves in the spirit and equip themselves in the spirit so that when the time of transition takes place, they're at a level of independence to continue to go on until the spirit sends them elsewhere. If mm -hmm. the spirit sends them elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you cannot cripple yourself. You have to put in the work. In, and again, speaking to the sacrifice, everyone as a spiritual practitioner, whether you're prophet, leader, teacher, healer, whatever, in any office that you operate in, our levels of sacrifice vary. And even for every bishop, every practitioner, every root worker, their, their lives are not all the same. There may be very strong, distinct commonalities mm -hmm. and some unspoken truths and rules, but the embodiment of what that looks like will vary by person. Mm -hmm. You know, and that goes down to, again, the agreements that we made with the most high to fulfill the work that we were charged to do. Mm -hmm. 100% agree. I said, but the leaders. Okay. I see Pyro. Kwame, are you on your page or are you on Pyro? Oh, okay. Kwame said I came up under my Pyro account. Okay. And for okay. those that uh, also want to know, well, do the Bible reference anything about marijuana and stuff? It doesn't mention marijuana and everything because during that time, that was not the right for it. But during that time, all of that stuff was used to heal, cure, all of that. I hate to say it. Okay, we grew over here. Um, we grew up to know that the dandelions that grew up in our yards, those we supposed to kill them, destroy them, because they don't do nothing but destroy your yard and make your yard look ugly. But what you don't know is if you go out there and get that dandelion and you cut that stem off, you'd be surprised what all that stem would do for that body. Everything Listen. that you pull from that ground for that dandelion is completely edible. You want to know Hold why on. you don't? they tell you not to do it? Because there's a company by the name of Roundup. And Roundup is owned by all the major pharmaceutical companies. So if they don't want you to go and get the natural out there, they want you to come to them and milk out your insurance. <laughs> but if you go ahead and study the word like it tells you to, the Bible tells you Psalms, even if you go to the book of Revelations, which a lot of preachers preach out of because they call to tell them about them burning the Bible, uh, burning with the Bible in their hand. But the book of Revelations also tell you where to go to the earth to cure all types of uncrazy things. Wait, you know what? Do you know what dandelions cure? <laughs> Inflammation, <laughs> gas, all yeah. that stuff. High cholesterol, diabetes, vision, high blood pressure. You got problems with your vision and you mean poor you circulation. You don't want to wear glasses. Go and get you a few dandelions and eat those yellow um, leaves and burn uh, and, burn, and boil those stems down and drink that good old water. Yes, man. Good bush tea. Mm. That's a I fact. Said we used to crack jokes when we used to grow up. You remember, you probably had this growing up, uh, Josh, and probably you, Rob, we in the same age group. Well, we used to crack jokes when our big mom and these them used to go out there and we could see them catching those wild greens and they go in the house and you cook like, I'm not going to eat that. She just got that from out y'all. And what you said, go to the doctor and got no problems. With no problems whatsoever, but we sucking for some of everything. Yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's Everything the truth. that we they get... tell us is poisonous that we're not supposed to eat. It's what we need to eat. But what we're going to spend our money on is the poison that we're putting in our bodies. Right. I just heard very clearly we give our time, we give no time for our bodies and our minds and our spirits to truly heal and to truly build up. And that's the reason why your true spirit cannot come out and let you know what's being heard. Facts. Facts. Y'all quick, y'all out here. Oh, I keep seeing 111, 333, 444, 1111. Oh, let me go and play this in the lottery. Not only play that in the lottery, that means your angel, your ancestors is trying to contact you and tell you something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate to say it. You want to know why y'all prayers don't get answered? Because y'all praying wrong. 
Okay, stop saying you hate to tell them and just tell them. <laughs> Go ahead. Your prayers ain't your prayers ain't being heard because you ain't doing it right. You praying to a God that told you he's not listening to nothing you said. And you want to know how you pray to a God? Pray to him without and he's not listening, speaking in a tongue that you're not even familiar with what you're speaking. Because everybody else is doing, so I'm going to go ahead and say it and try to say it because everybody else said it, but you don't even know what you're saying. And you're praying and you ask for the list that you don't need. This world is yours. You are the kings and the queens. But the thing is, what is you going to do to bring to cause your power to come out and show itself? You are sons and daughters of Elohim. Come on now. Hmm. Yes. The same thing Moses and all of them was yes. able to do, the same thing Paul was able to do. If Bishop Mason was able to do what Paul and all of them was able to do, why you can't? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, this, this oh, is... Yeah. Mm. And I, I don't want to hold everybody too much long because we got, I'll say we got probably like 15 minutes. But yeah. all of this knowledge, all of this knowledge that we are giving the people tonight, what I have grown and come to understand is everybody's not going to receive it. And that is truly the thing. Like people now glorify the fact of Bishop Mason being who he was. But honestly, when you talk about who he actually was, they take the pictures down. Mm -hmm. They try to remove all this, those sticks and everything that we see. They remove all of that out the church. But you cannot deny that man's spirit. No, sir. You removed it for what? When you removed that, you removed his his royal elements. Well, and and, uh, uh, let me finish this. His spirit. Okay, I'm going to need y'all. Can y'all stop texting me right now, please? His spirit is so strong in Mason Temple, not just because his body is there, but his spirit is there. And he has to sit there and watch all of the debacle go down in that temple. That man prayed. He prayed. He prayed a keeping spell over this church. Mm-hmm. And people really don't even understand. And the mm-hmm. only reason why Church of God in Christ has not went under is because of the prayer that he prayed so many years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. So, I, I mean, everything. And I just I wanted to cover today. I didn't know when I was going to do it. But I wanted to cover today and I did it this morning and tonight about who Bishop Mason really is. And I want people to understand that nothing that I'm saying is negative. Nothing that any one of us, Ra, Damien has said, has been negative. The only thing that may seem negative to you all is the fact that we are talking about the African origin of who we really are and how we should pray and how they, our ancestors, and our grandparents and foreparents have prayed. Yep. I live this, you know. I started I started as a public uh, 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 service practitioner to the community at the age of 18 years old. You understand? And still coexisted in ministry. And it took a few years before I made it known, known, to the public that this is what I do, but I had to stand predominant because I realized there were elders before me that did it. I look at Mother Boyd, I look at Mother Char, I look at Father Mason, I look at Father Hayes, and even present-day Bishop Trotter, who's still holding on to the remnants of the old-time ways, you understand, in secret. And I, I stand proudly and boldly as a root worker, and as a priest, as a practitioner, and also as a pastor. I stand boldly in it because I realize that God has positioned me as such to edify my people, to strengthen my people. It's not about converting. It's not about telling you to leave away. It's about teaching you to understand who you are and the God in you, the God around you, and the God of your ancestors 
to equip you and empower and empower you to progress in life, to progress in your spirit. Because when you understand who you are and what you come from, you better understand yourself. And so it will aid you in overcoming your overcoming your depression. It will aid you in overcoming your sicknesses. Because when we go to the priest in African spirituality, we will know what we can eat and cannot eat and why. So for some of us that have high blood pressure and diabetes and blindness and all these things in our family, we can fix and stop some of these generational curses if we live in alignment and are aware and make the changes. But because we're comfortable and codependent upon westernized beliefs and principles, we stay where we are and we suffer. We look good, but we're suffering. We're dressing nice, but our homes are in discord. We're, we're, we're looking good, but we don't know how to treat ourselves nor the people around us. You understand you're praying and working on projects and businesses that cannot get off the ground because of what? Simply choosing, as someone said earlier, I will not acknowledge my ancestors. I will not acknowledge the divinity that is innate in my DNA. I will not call forth the inheritance of my bloodline. That's a choice. So as you choose to stay where you are, we must continue to choose to grow in spirit and in our divinity to fulfill the calling and the mission, because just as there are those that choose us to renounce and refuse, I guarantee you watch your generations to come. Because as you drop the mantle, as my mother and my grandmother did, and I had to pick up what my great grandparents and my great great grandparents left behind because they didn't want to do the work. Mm-hmm. And I leave to assure you that all of my first cousins, I opened the door that now all of my first cousins near and far are now practicing. My little cousins and, little, and, and small babies are in my shrine room making medicine. This is the work of the ancestors. You understand? And so I stand in, in power and I encourage you and I send a wave of power and empowerment to your lives. Those that are you that are listening and ready to receive the mantle to walk in the vocation with no fear. Walk in the vacation and prove all things. When you dream, when you have visions, when you hear a voice speaking to you, question it. Dive into it. Understand it. And when you get the instructions and the revelation, then make your move. And walk in faith, not in fear, because God will carry you. Your ancestors will carry you. The divine and all that walks with you for your highest good will carry you if you're living and operating with pure intent. And those are my words to you all in love. So I, I do appreciate Damon. I do appreciate Ra for taking the time. Listen, if you all are interested in contacting Ra or um, any type of spiritual workings or anything, understand, please don't waste his time. Don't call him with the who bang, shoe bang. I promise you, listen, we, we nice. We'll get you all the way together at the same time, too. I'm a teddy bear with a bite. <laughs> or I will and just push I'll, I'll, com- I'll completely open it. If they want to know the true history and nature of voodoo and who this, I have no problem with teaching you the true divine truth of it versus what you actually been told. And Damon, we're gonna we gonna we gonna do and see this is the thing. You said something that is so true. You can't when they're doing those private services. You're not allowed to take pictures. You're not supposed to. When they, and here's the thing, when they have those services for the bishops that they're elevating, like, I'm talking about real services. When they have them real services where they're consecrated mm-hmm. those bishops and them bishops got to lay on top of each other and everything like that. Oh, you know about the operations. Talk about That's the right. Kabbalistic <laughs> movement. Come with it. Yes, now. That's the inner chambers. They know they ain't ready for that. You didn't took them too far just now. You took them, hey, you didn't took them three levels deep. They wasn't ready for that. <laughs> no, they're not ready for it. And, and to show you they're not ready for it, the white man is the places in their face uh, something that no one's seen in over since Queen Elizabeth was done the first time. The monarchy do the exact same thing when it goes to yes. to anoint the king. You are not allowed to see that. No, I will say this: um, for those of you that are truly willing and have a desire to see what the old time way of worship is like, I am a spiritual Baptist pastor. And so I conduct services and celebrations the Caribbean way, which is also the old time way that was done in the South, where we deal with spirit possession and we commune with the ancestors and we commune with the African spirits and the saints. So if you are inquisitive and you want to see and experience, 
reach out because I host things here in Georgia. You understand? And there's things if you're in the East Coast that we can arrange, you know, so it's not dead. It's a very much so alive and well. When you speak about Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago and Grenada and Haiti, you understand, and even parts of the U.S. where the Africans and the Caribbeans have migrated to to this present day, we are still operating alive and well the old time way with calabashes and old school clothes and basins and giving baths and working with bush and candles and incense, you know, and calling down the ancestors and moaning and groaning like an old time really devotion service. We have that. So if you want to see, search me out. And if your spirit calls you, you will be present in the mix and you will get a chance to have an encounter that will elevate your spirit to the next level. Mm -hmm. They don't know what the real Holy Ghost feel like yet. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you going to understand why they said it feel like fire? <laughs> oh, yeah. They have, oh, yeah. really have no clue. <laughs> Everybody talking about they got it, but baby, you really... No, I, you promise you, I, I promise you. I promise you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> And, and this is just me being honest. And as a child, I know I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit long, well, the, it fell on me a long time, long, long time ago as a child. My life has always been different. My life has always been set apart. I, I definitely could not do like everybody else did. I, and I always tell people, I, I didn't voluntarily lose my virginity until I was 24, 23, 24. And so even after that, I was always very selective to who I, you know, I share yourself with. Yes. I shared myself with because I always felt within myself, whatever's in me is precious. And every time you live with someone, you take a part of them with you. And every time you sleep with someone, a part you y'all and y'all y'all join and y'all share spirits and so i don't i don't baby i don't have time all of that all oh, that feel good that feel good we're not gonna get into that subject tonight but that is so the truth so we're gonna do this again y'all i appreciate both of these gentlemen for coming on tonight and us having this conversation uh i didn't know i didn't think it was gonna go like this i really didn't know how it was gonna go and didn't care I know Ra, I know Damon, and I know it was going to be good, but I didn't know how it was going to be like this. I appreciate you, gentlemen, for, do, for doing this. If you all need them, reach out to them. Y'all know y'all always come on my page asking me questions all the time. Now there are two other gentlemen that are out here that can also give you uh, a word of knowledge, some information that can help you. Uh, somebody said, what time? But we know, well, what you mean, what time, niece? Um, and to Rob, just me, baby, not now time on this slide. Did we talk about necromancy? No, that's a whole nother. Listen, hmm. let's we can pick that up. I'm ready. We can go that we will talk about necromancy and we'll talk about the exchange of spirit and intimacy in the same topic. I'm ready when you're ready. I'm ready when you're ready. You know what? <laughs> okay, I got I, me, me and my mom a day at a time, and we're gonna lock that in. That's that's that. that that we're gonna talk about it because they see it and don't even know they're seeing it. But we'll we're gonna wait for that conversation. We'll talk about this afterwards because I'm thinking Sunday, because I got nothing to do Sunday. Uh let me see. And when you ready to do LGBTQIA and all of that, all of that. But you know what? Speaking of that, you remember we were talking on that earlier. I we said to my LGBTQ and spirituality and its connection. Is that where you're going? They about to get all kind of messed up. Oh, okay. We, we can do that because that plays a huge role in it too. But uh, we was talking on the LGBTQIA community and how it is in Africa because yeah. you know, people say that is um it's it's not some places of Africa it is illegal, but for the most part, like in South Africa, it's not illegal. But if you go into the tribal areas outside of the major cities and places like that, so, you yeah. pretty much set yourself up for whatever happens. So you're talking about pre-colonial Africa and post-colonial Africa exactly. and present-day Africa still. Right. Um, in Africa, pre-colonial Africa, there were multiple sexual de sexual identifications. Mm -hmm. You understand? You know, and even in marital standings, there were sometimes if a man died and had only a daughter or his first mom was a daughter, she would be categorized as a son and had the permission to also take on a wife. 
Mm-hmm. This is also facts. Not mm-hmm. saying she was necessarily intimate, but these things happen. You understand for various of reasons. And so when we get into gay, straight, bisexual, those are just very minor Western world identifications. Right, because... All of the East, all of the East, all of right. the East, even trans identity and eunuchs, all of the East, historically, post-colonial Africa, present-day colonial Africa, you know, it is still present and alive. And why is it illegal? It is because, again, talking about assimilation with the colonizer, mm-hmm. getting your money politically, reigns and rights, political power. So mm-hmm. you will begin to shape and mold your community and societies according to who's your benefactor. Who is and so price? when you get outside of the bounds of the benefactor, you find the real. And in the real, you will find that the sexual identities go far beyond just the three or four major categories that we are presently aware of in the mm-hmm. West. But mm-hmm. that is another conversation for a different day. Yeah, because as my father said, they don't know what that is. That's something that's over there. It's a whole nother name and meaning for it, and it's not what you all think it is. So what Africa do not care for is what you all have over here. What the gays and things over there is a whole different category, and it's not what everyone makes it out to be. The mm-hmm. Hey, Bishop and Lady Hudson, how you doing? Uh, this, so the dude, Rob, said, can we, t- we can talk about it, but it does necromancy when you deal with dead with the dead if that's answers no 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 let me tell you when you did a quick segment to that when you're talking about necromancy and the dead dealing with ancestors on a basic level is not necromancy mm-hmm. when you get into the aspect of actually raising the dead because right. those and, and Masonic practices and Kabbalistic practices, those things do happen. People right. that are part of sacred societies, these are things that we must do in certain times, places, and situations. They do exist. But mm-hmm. when we are dealing with just ancestors overall, it is not necromancy. That's a lie. Mm-hmm. But when you go into the cemetery and perform operations to rap, call, and conjure, you understand with keys and invocation to raise the dead, to operate and work for you. That is necromancy. Another aspect of necromancy is actually using human remains as a power, as a source of power. So when we think about the old churches, the, the, the Orthodox churches, when we think about the Catholic churches, everyone either has tombs under the church or skulls buried under the pulpit or skull positions high facing the pulpit. You understand, and even in the islands, there are certain things that we believe must be put into the b- bottom of the sem- center pole that is the mm. base and the pillar of the church. Sometimes it may be bones, sometimes it's not. It depends on the road of the church. Wait a minute, hold up. I got a question. Where is Bishop Mason buried at again? In his <laughs> church. Come on, people. That's oh, necromancy. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, right. okay. It's just what the Catholics do, and guess where they get it from? Egyptian culture, comedic mm-hmm. science, Kushnite belief, Samaritan practices. Mm-hmm. Aquarian practices, these things is what we must do to preserve our legacy. Do it. So <laughs> all of you that are turning your back to those that walk into Mason Temple, those that have set foot on the continent of Africa, even on the grounds of the islands, you have walked on someone's tomb. You mm-hmm. understand? And if you're talking about long life and legacy for generations and hundreds of years to come, you must do that. You and must do that. Not only that, if you go to Lake Lanier, you swimming on people too. So still, you still there we go. regardless. <laughs> and still collecting catfish. <laughs> so. so it is. It, so there's levels to the thing. So when we talk about the ancestors, I don't mind going into the levels of what an ancestor is. What is an elevated ancestor? What is a trapped spirit? What is a locked spirit? What is a traveling spirit? What is a wayward spirit? We can talk about those. And then we'll get into necromancy. But just working with the ancestors is not that. And there's certain mysteries of necromancy I'm not allowed to share because I'm a part of a certain order. I can't reveal certain things. But on the basic guidelines to give you an understanding of what is and what is not, we can discuss those things. And on that note, I'm gonna close my book because I got yes. I got some stuff I gotta do tonight. Yes, uh, sir. I love y'all down here, y'all. I appreciate y'all for staying on. Um, y'all, what you know, the Bible say where there's two or three gathered, he will be in the midst. And we have yes. honestly enjoyed ourselves. This yes. has honestly not been anything negative. Educating the people um sometimes can be a hard feat. Uh, a difficult task because so many people are in resistance. But you know what? Honestly, when you have an open heart and an open mind and are willing to study, willing to do the work and all of those things, 
uh, you can go far. That's the purpose of going to school. That's the purpose yes. of going to college and getting furthering your education is opening yourself up to learn. Because I promise you, just studying the Bible is not going to get you there. You need to study mm -hmm. all. Maybe when you study all the books, your mind will be blown. Mm -hmm. And this too, Damon, you, uh, da uh, Damon, you brought up a powerful point that Bishop Mason was summoned to Africa. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you that have your passports and going to Cancun and Tulum and all these places, go and immerse yourself in your black culture. I'm not telling mm -hmm. you where to go. But go and step outside of yourself and go and see what it is, not what they've told you it is. Not everybody's walking around half naked with no clothes, with their ass stinking. You mm -hmm. know, they're civilized, educated, creative, sound, solid people with strong spiritual foundation and jewels that they are willing and called and destined to share with you. But you must make yourself there and receptive. Go into the islands, not just to tour, but go up into the mountains of Jamaica and meet the Maroon elders in mm -hmm. Westmoreland. Go and meet the healers. You understand when you're going into Mexico, go and see the shamans and speak to the elders and really learn something about God because God just did not make Jesus and, and, and Muhammad and, 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 and all these people, but he created all things. Mm -hmm. So we cannot say that we are higher or greater than the shaman or those down in South America or those down yeah. in the South Africa or in Zimbabwe somewhere. We're not. They have jewels. And when yeah. you look at spirit and God, it's not about material things. It's about the fullness and the wholeness of your well-being. Period. Yeah. And so, he was also, uh, let's small note before we go, Bishop Mason was also uh, buried with, very expensive, uh, unexpensive that you can't even put a value on it with him because he's the only person in the America when he passed each and every king that was sitting on the throne of Africa came to his service and that's the, no other king came for no other president in the United States but they was all here for Bishop Mason. I sure. So before I go it is offering time but I know y'all gonna be slow I ain't gonna even do that to y'all. Uh, Rock can you, can you pray a special financial blessing on 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 us on tonight and we going to get out of here. Yes, I call for the spirit of Elohim, Elohim El Shaddai, Olo Dumar, the spirit of all the divine names of the creator God. I give you reverence and I greet you this evening. I give reverence to the ancestors of our father's side and the ancestors of our mother's side that walk with us to carry us. We come before you in petition asking that you will open up the way and the crossroads for us that there may be blockages before us, but I ask that you would remove the blockages. I ask that you remove any adversities that are preventing us from reaching our goals to obtain what it is that we're seeking. Spirit of the Most High, I ask that you would begin to bless our feet to walk in the direction of blessings. I ask that you would begin to consecrate our hands to open up to receive the blessings that you have for us. I ask that you would begin to seal and align our consciousness and our subconsciousness to hear you, to see you, to understand you, to know which directions to go, to know which decisions to make, and to know what agreements to assign to. Spirit Divine, we need you in this time never before, but we ask that you will show yourself and reveal yourself more and more to us daily. Be patient and kind to us. Teach us and guide us us in the way in which we should go. Open up our minds and our hearts to receive your fullness in every way in which you choose to manifest yourself in our lives at this time and at this hour. Spirit of God, I ask that you will counsel out every form of life that in this week alone, I speak into the atmosphere with the ashe that you bless me with, that people will begin to receive unexpected blessings. I'm speaking that people will begin to see miracles happen in their body, that people will begin to come out of low places that they may be in right now. God, I'm even speaking that unity will begin to manifest in homes today and relationships will begin to be repaired. And God, that even those are people that are lingering that should not be the God, you will begin to remove them out of our lives so that we can continue to progress in the manner in which you have called us to do and go. Spirit divine, this is my prayer tonight. Keep us, guide us, walk with us and order our hands accordingly. And even as we begin to slumber tonight, meet us in the celestial plane and reveal mysteries unto us that will stabilize us and transform us and aid us in our daily life. Amen. All right, y'all. Listen, I appreciate it. Somebody had a question. We're not going to entertain it tonight. Somebody said, are we introducing secular practices into the Christianity? Sir, um, you weren't even listening. Go back and watch the entire video. We'll get you on the back end. Christianity is not our religion. So 
that was Jesus something. Didn't even, Yeshua didn't even deal with religion. Uh, you know what? Listen, I hope y'all have enjoyed tonight's show. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. This has been fun. I'm going to see y'all next time, okay? Peace! I don't think y'all